traditional and rational science of gentle healing and is based upon law of nature necessity is the mother of invention a very healthy and delightful morning to honorable principal ma'am respected teachers worthy seniors and my dear friends it is rightly moment of covid let us all share and ponder over our own exploration being the stakeholders on the topic historical journey of homeopathy during epidemic diseases in the light of 2019 novel coronavirus pandemic this is indeed a great opportunity to be able to make a nikke in the field of healing and treatment i tripti from bhms second year with my fellow mates feels prime privilege to welcome you all to this gathering of intellectuals well to start with the introduction of our speakers speaker 1 ritika chawla speaker 2 tripti berwa and pradeep sharma and our content providers are content provider number 2 dipti handelwal content provider number 3 kuldeep yadav now ritika will enlighten us by the introduction of our today's topic A warm regard as Abraham Lincoln reminds that if I am giving 6 hours to chop down a tree for the first few hours I'll x so it would be easy for next 2 hours to chop down the tree cutting the same example here I want to draw the attention of the entire community and society of stakeholders of health and hygiene medicine Our medicines are pills given after the diagnosis of the disease. While the good things about keeping yourself, it is like a ring. There is certainly no doubt that the amount of acceleration is not exact in its way. Seeing that the entire world is grown due to the impact of globalization. or might be the problems created in nature. Now it is imperative. Imperative. to all of us that you must understand that we have not been able to combat any of the pandemic the to root actually we said that once there was a task to be done everybody i said everybody every thought that somebody will do it anybody could have done it but nobody did it it is the same way that peoples all around the world are actually trying to root out to eradicate the problems towards our hand present era while we are nearly able to diagnose the symptoms prone conditions and might be treatments in the field of research it will not be good it not be good to say to create more and more medicine but on earth without this we get on we can get on well here might be an answer that we should not look forward for upcoming disaster is the great minds who has pondered over the matters has one come to say that a stitches in the time saves nine let us be somebody let us be that somebody who can do it for everyone let not wait to say that nobody did it it is well said that we have no in- inherited this planet from our forefathers we have actually borrowed this from our next generation so we can't leave them the advancing dis- deserts the advancing disease or the advancing detentions we should not have a free hold on any of the resources and carefully to make it a go to make it a go for and so that nobody should scum towards the humans and approach to appreciate this beautiful botany of nature let us all take homeopathy is a therapeutic system founded by the german physician dr samuel hahnemann in late 17th century and has been used 200 years around the world in acute and chronic condition flourished during the time of epidemic diseases and the use of homeopathic remedy as a genius epidemicus and homeoprophylaxis begin with hahnemann 
the effectiveness of homeopathic remedy in epidemics has been scarcely proved by controlled studies yet there is a vast historical evidence which proves that homeopathic remedy is successfully used to prevent these conditions the homeopathic literature was in doubt the historical evidence of the use of homeopathic remedies during epidemics and pandemics वैसे तो हमें होम्योपैथिक वैसे तो हमें पेंडामिक्स और एपिडामिक्स में बहुत ही मतलब होम्योपैथिक मेडिसिन का कंट्रोल स्टडी करने को मिला है बिकॉज जो भी एपिडामिक में जनरली डोमिनेटिक सिस्टम होता है मेडिसिन का उसे भी यूज किया में कई ऐसे एविडेंस है जिसमें हम ये प्रूव कर सकते हैं कि हमने एपिडामिक और पेंडामिक में भी अपना अच्छा रिजल्ट दिखाया है Homeopathic treatment in the epidemic is reviewed in eight diseases, and the results are found for epidemics of scarlet fever, typhus, cholera, dysentery, Spanish flu, diphtheria, measles, and whooping cough. So, homeopathy in this record, there is a huge difference between the mortality rate of conventional treatment and mortality rate of homeopathic treatment. And in various epidemic, homeopathic has shown its result by the treatments. In year eighteen thirteen, in typhus epidemic, the mortality rate of conventional treatment is thirty percent, whereas in homeopathic treatment, it is one point five percent. In year Eighteen thirty in cholera epidemic, the mortality rate of conventional treatment is forty percent, whereas in homeopathic treatment it is seven to ten percent. In year eighteen fifty four in cholera epidemic, the mortality rate of conventional treatment is fifty nine percent, whereas in homeopathic treatment it is nine percent. In year Eighteen fifty in yellow fever epidemic, the mortality rate of conventional treatment is fifteen percent, whereas in homeopathic treatment it is six percent. In year eighteen seventy eight in yellow fever epidemic, the mortality rate of conventional treatment is fifty percent, whereas in homeopathic treatment it is five point six percent. Eighteen sixty four in diphtheria, the mortality rate of conventional treatment is eighty three percent, whereas in homeopathic treatment it is sixteen point four percent. In year eighteen in cholera, the mortality rate of uh, conventional treatment is forty two percent, whereas in homeopathic treatment it is fifteen percent. In year nineteen eighteen. In Spanish flu influenza, the mortality rate is one point zero five percent. Now, further slides will continue by Tripti. what is epidemic diseases the epidemic diseases are those diseases in which many individuals are affected very similarly from a similar cause which becomes contagious in crowded areas epidemics manifest a similar disease process which if left to itself ends either in death or in recovery within a limited time homeopathy is founded upon principles based upon basic natural laws which remain firm and intact whether it is an acute case or the panics of epidemics as from the slide it is clear that homeopathy is based on an eternal truth the therapeutic law of cure is also known as nature's law of cure that is similia similibus curanter which means religious principles hanuman intuited the concept of contagion principle as a vehicle capable of transmitting epidemic diseases he described acute epidemic miasms acquired through a contagious principle which today could be equated to a microbe or virus infection close observation of the first cases in an epidemic of infectious disease is exceedingly valuable to obtain the symptomatology of epidemic disease डॉक्टर हैनीमैन ने एक्सप्लेन किया था कि जो कंटेजियस प्रिंसिपल टर्म होम्योपैथी में यूज होती है वो इक्वल है माइक्रोब्स एंड वायरसेस के जो कि हैनीमैन सर ने अफॉरिजम 11 के फुट नोट में एक्सप्लेन किया है दैट इज मटीरिया पिकेंस व्हिच मींस मटीरियल कॉज ऑफ द डिजीज देयर इज नो रोल ऑफ एनी मटीरिया पिकेंस इन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ डिजीज और द डिरेंजमेंट ऑफ वाइटल फोर्स 
the cause of disease is always dynamic in nature now in a way has an important role to play in the case of epidemic diseases even the most severe and fearful epidemics like scarlet fever cholera etc have been encountered successfully by homeopathic medicines who has recently called for innovative approaches for treating communicable diseases supporting the role of traditional medicine in maintaining the health of population होम्योपैथी बहुत ही मेजर रोल प्ले करती है किसी भी एपिडेमिक डिजीज में मोस्ट सीवियर एंड मोस्ट फियरफुल एपिडेमिक डिजीज भी होम्योपैथिक मेडिसिन के थ्रू होम्योपैथिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ प्रोफाइल एक्सेस होम्यो प्रोफाइल एक्सेस इज डिफाइन एज अ यूज ऑफ होम्योपैथी टू प्रिवेंट डिजीज हैनिमेन फाउंडेड मेडिसिन नॉट ऑन फिजिक्स इन केमिस्ट्री बट ऑन द यूनिवर्सल लॉ ऑफ लाइफ एंड मोशन ही रेफर्स ऑल द फिनोमिना ऑफ हेल्थ एंड डिजीज under two names the dynamis and the life force according to the slide the law of dynamis is unknown to human being that how the vital force pervades each cell uniformly remain unknown to us only its effect are made clear to exist in the cell the organism is alive the cell function in dynamic action what happen can be seen but why it is happen it can't be explained an extract from hanuman lesser writing treatment of scarlet fever the first the burning heat the drowsy stupefaction the agonizing tossing about with diarrhea and even convulsions was subdued in a very short time at most an hour by a very small quantity of opium either externally by means of a piece of paper moistened with a strong tincture of opium laid upon the pit of the stomach and left they are until it dries or if there is no vomiting internally by giving a small quantity of solution of opium tincture formed by adding one part of root opium to 20 part of weak alcohol letting it stand in a cool place for a week and shaking it occasionally to promote the solution for internal use i take intimately with 500 drops of diluted alcohol and one drop of this mixture likewise with other 500 drops of diluted alcohol shaken the whole well of this diluted tincture of opium which contains in every drop 1/5 one-fifth, 1/5 million part of a grain of opium when drop given internally sufficient and two drops in that of a child of 10 years to remove the above state the second in the course of the disease the increase of fever towards evening the sleeplessness the total loss of appetite the nausea the groaning that is and was removed in a few quarters of an hour by ipecacuanha i found these two remedies as indispensable as they were generally completely sufficient not only towards of the fatal termination to alleviate the scarlet fever i now earnestly desire to be able if possible to preserve the other five children of the family free from infection their removal was impossible i reason thus a remedy that is capable of quickly checking a disease in its onset must be its best preventive and the following occurrence strengthened me in the correctness of this conclusion some weeks previously three children of another family lay ill a very bad scarlet fever the eldest who up to that period had been taking belladonna internally for an external affection on the joints of her fingers to my during the prevalence of other epidemics she had always been the first to take them the circumstances completely confirmed my idea i know i now hesitated not to administer to the other five children of this numerous family the divine remedy as a preservative in very small doses and as the peculiar action of, of this plant does not last above 3 days i repeated the dose every 72 hours and they all remained perfectly well without the slightest symptom, symptom throughout the hanuman sir morbific aging versus vital principle homeopathic concept of disease defines the cause as morbific dynamic agent which invades for living organism and if could defeat the vital principle then produces the sign and symptoms characteristic of the morbific agent upon the body and mind of the victim 
any disease can be prevented by keeping the life force undisturbed staying these natural function of the vital principle of the organism through which it prevents and cures the disease morbific aging is like a virus or bacteria that disturbs and harmony of the body vital principle is a special kind of power possessed by material body that helps to prevent and cure the disease and maintain the harmony of the body for homeopathic prophylaxis in infectious disease we can, we need not hunt the bacteria or virus for the vaccination this is because homeopathic therapy is symptomatic and not materialistic and emphasis is on totality of symptom as patient disease and not on virus so it is the pair vaccine against such diseases as the viruses frequently changes their genetic pattern each time they appear in the epidemic form interestingly in an epidemic requires different remedies when rages in different places किसी भी वायरस के अगेंस्ट वैक्सीन बनाना इसलिए डिफिकल्ट होता है बिकॉज वो अपना जेनेटिक पैटर्न चेंज करता रहता है जब भी वो अपनी एपिडेमिक फॉर्म में आता है नाउ द प्रिजर्वर ऑफ हेल्थ द सुप्रीम इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ प्रोफाइल एक्सेस लाइज इन द इको ऑफ एफर इफ ही नोज द थिंग्स दट डिरेंज हेल्थ एंड कॉज डिजीज एंड हाउ टू रिमूव दैम फ्रॉम पर्सन a forism 4 defines the preserver of health the mission of the physician is not just curing the sick individual but even preventing the people from becoming sick the women says that the physician is not only a preserver of health by guiding on sanitation and hygiene a physician can fulfill his rights homeopathy as a immune booster in hospitalization but there are remedies that can build up immunity to infectious as well as act as curative where a disease has developed these remedy carry no risk of detrimental effect they are absolutely safe from the can alter a wide course than epidemic homeopathy mein immunization nahi hota but hum remedy ke through kisi bhi infectious agent ke against immunity build up kar sakte hain homeopathic medicine ek stronger artificial disease kar create kar deti hai होम्योपैथिक मेडिसिन के थ्रू जो वाइटल फोर्स किसी डिजीज की वजह से ऑल्टर हुआ था वो अपनी हेल्दी स्टेट में वापस आ जाता है प्री डिस्पोजिशन टू डिजीज नो डिजीज विल अराइज विदाउट एन एग्जिस्टिंग प्री डिस्पोजिशन टू दैट डिजीज सक्सेप्टेबिलिटी इन द ऑर्गेनिज्म मेंटल और बॉडीली इज इक्वल टू द स्टेट इन्वॉल्विंग एटीट्यूड टूवर्ड्स द इंटरनल कॉज इन हेल्थ वी लिव एंड एक्ट एंड रेजिस्ट विदाउट नोइंग इट बट इन डिजीज वी लिव बट सफर it is the absence of predisposition to any particular disease that makes us immune to it homeopathy alone is capable of removing these predisposition jab tak hamari predisposition produce nahi kar sakta is process se hamari body ki susceptibility aur predisposition ka kaam karna zaruri hota hai hanemanan approach the hanemanan outlook of preventing an epidemic is a two fold one is to collect the subjective and the objective risk of epidemic in an area to find the genius epidemicus for both the prevention and the treatment but this type of approach satisfies the long term immunity in the organism the second approach is to give a remedy which was effective in previous epidemic which best suits when genius epidemicus is not worked out hanuman and sir ne do tarike bataye the to deal with the epidemic disease के बेसिस पे जीनियस एपिडेमिकस को देख है जो रेमेडी प्रीवियस एपिडेमिक में बेस्ट यूटेड थी वो हम प्रिस्क्राइब कर सकते हैं अगर हमारी प्रेजेंट जीनियस एपिडेमिकस वर्क नहीं कर रही है तो जीनियस एपिडेमिकस टाइटिंग विदाउट यूजिंग द एक्सप्रेशन जीनियस एपिडेमिकस हाउ एवर एज डी रिलेटेड कॉन्वर्जेशन ही हैड विद हेनिमन एंड ही वॉज विजिटिंग हिम इन एटीन थर्टी वन इन विच हेनिमन एंड यूज द टर्म जीनियस एपिडेमिकस Underlying the practical concept of genius epidemicus is the working hypothesis that is the same cause must be followed by like effect. Hanuman and described the same process in paragraph 101, 241, and 733 in the organon, but it's still without using the term genius epidemicus. How to select a remedy in genius epidemicus? The genius epidemicus is an apparent conflict within the homeopathic methodology of the strict in. which is the fundamental key to the success in homeopathy but in epidemic we can try to individualize the collective disease rather than every single case affected by the epidemic disease 
the selection of the remedy must be from the totality of epidemic symptoms and not from the one individual case वैसे तो हम होम्योपैथी में इंडिविजुअलाइजेशन करते हैं और वो क्वालिटी के बेसिस पे और हम रेमेडी सेलेक्ट करते हैं और उसको बोलते हैं जीनियस एपिडेमिक इट इज नॉट ऑलवेज इजी टू फाइंड वन रेमेडी फॉर एन एंटायर एपिडेमिक एंड एस्पेशली ड्यूरिंग अ पेंडेमिक द जीनियस एपिडेमिक टेंस टू चेंज फ्रॉम द क्लाइमेट एरिया टू अन फ्रॉम सी शोर टू द माउंटेन द जीनियस एपिडेमिक मे बी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट स्टेजेस ऑफ एन एपिडेमिक इन द सेम लोकैलिटी Homeoprophylaxis and its historical evidences. Homeoprophylaxis is defined as the use of homeopathy to prevent the disease. Homeoprophylaxis is the use of potentized substance in a systemic manner to prevent the development of the characteristic symptoms of infectious disease. It was first described in 1801. It is comparably effective to vaccination and it is also completely non-toxic and therefore safe. कोई भी इंफेक्शियस डिजीज के अगेंस्ट में मेडिसिन प्रिस्क्राइब करते हैं तो वो पोर्टेंट पोर्टेंटाइज फॉर्म में देते हैं इसकी वजह से वो डिजीज को प्रिवेंट कर सकती है नाउ द टेबल देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन द प्रोफाइल देर आर डिफरेंट प्रोफाइलेक्टिक रेमेडीज व्हिच वर यूज्ड इन द वेरियस एपिडेमिक्स इन द डिजीज डिफ्टीरिया द प्रोफाइलेक्टिक रेमेडीज वर एपिस मेलिफिका डिफ्टीरिनम कैलिमुराटिकम मर्क्यूरियस एंड फास्फोरस इन द डिजीज स्मॉल पॉक्स द प्रोफाइलेक्टिक रेमेडीज वर एंटम टार्ट Tuja and Verulinum. The disease measles, rheumatic measles, arsenic, serum fos, and pulsatilla nigricans. In the disease cholera, the remedies were arsenic, camphor, cholerinum, cuprum met, sulphur, and veratrum. In the disease typhus, diphtheria, hyoscyamus, ignisia, ruta G. In the scarlet fever, the remedies were aconite, apis, bryonia, carbovet, eupatorium perth, rust off, and sulphur. in the disease yellow fever the arsenic carbovet and crotalus were the remedies let light be cured by light a substance that is capable of producing in many healthy persons a group of symptoms similar to the characteristic symptoms of an infectious disease is capable previously unprotected persons an imminent proving of syncona is a prophylactic for malaria nose words are the further example of this application of the law of similar similarly a substance that is capable of removing the characteristic symptoms of an infectious disease in many infected patients is capable of preventing similar symptoms in most previously unprotected persons phenomenon use of belladonna to pro, uh, to both treat and prevent the scarlet fever the thyroid sativus used in the polio epidemic to treat the polio can also be used for the polio prevention are the few examples method of homeopathic prophylaxis The first method is the use of constitutional remedy which strengthens the vital force by removing the predisposition increasing the vitality and raising the general immunity to the stress and disease. The second method is the use of genus epidemicus that is especially useful in the offering protection against acute epidemic disease. And the third method is the use of nosode in this method a nosode nosode of a targeted disease is given as a preventive to that disease. Prescription in genius epidemic at different stages. Epidemic disease में जब कोई remedy prescribe करते हैं तो उसकी four stages होती हैं. First is preventive stage, second is prodromal stage, third is disease stage, and fourth is disease stage with complication. Now first is preventive stage. As the disease is not manifested in individual, it strengthens the inbuilt host resistance to prevent the epidemic disease. इस स्टेज में हम लोग प्रिवेंशन के तरीके से हम लोग मेडिसिन देते हैं जैसे कि वो होस्ट उसके लिए इम्यूनिटी बिल्डअप कर ले उसकी रेजिस्ट करने के लिए उस पर्टिकुलर डिजीज को प्रोड्रोमल स्टेज इफ द जीनियस एपिडेमिक इज गिवन टू एन इंडिविजुअल इन इंक्यूबेशन और प्रोड्रोमल स्टेज देर विल बी एन इनसिग्निफिकेंट और मिनिमल मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ द डिजीज इन द इंडिविजुअल जब वो बैक्टीरिया या वायरस हमारी बॉडी में इन्वेट कर चुका है और अभी सिम्टम्स प्रोड्यूस नहीं हुए हैं तो उसको इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड बोलते हैं अगर हम उस पीरियड में किसी पेशेंट को मेडिसिन प्रिस्क्राइब करेंगे तो उसका इफेक्ट जो होगा वायरस या बैक्टीरिया का वो इनसिग्निफिकेंट होगा क्योंकि हमने मेडिसिन मेडिस एपिडेमिक डिजीज इज मैनिफेस्टेटेड इन एन इंडिविजुअल द सेम जीनियस एपिडेमिक ट्रीट हिम बिकॉज द रेमेडी कवर्स बोथ हिज सब्जेक्टिव एज वेल एज ऑब्जेक्टिव सिम्टम्स डिस्क्राइब करते हैं जब वायरस से बैक्टीरिया हमारी बॉडी में सिम्टम्स प्रोड्यूस करने लग गया है तब हम उससे एक स्ट्रॉगर आर्टिफिशियल डिजीज प्रोड्यूस करते हैं मेडिसिन से जो कि वीकर नेचुरल डिजीज को रेजिस्ट करे और वो हमारी बॉडी में से पूरी तरीके से बाहर निकल जाए 
for this disease stage with complication in the case of manifestation of the disease is severe with complication thorough individualization of the case including the significant symptoms of past and family history are important disease stage with complication mein hum log jo patient bahut zyada severe condition mein chale gaye hain complication ho gaya hai unki to hum log proper individualization karte hain uska family history past history mental generals physical generals sab को सबकी टोटालिटी बना के बेसिस पे हम लोग उसको डिजीज हम लोग now here is some data that proves the evidence of use of homeopathic medicine during the epidemic you can see that in the year 1801 the epidemic scarlet fever in which dr hennemann suggested belladonna can be used to prevent scarlet fever in the 1800 the epidemic poliomyelitis in which 5000 young children treated with the homeopathic axis in 1800 the epidemic of smallpox in which there is a occidentalis in treatment during 1841 to 1854 the epidemic cholera in which treatment in prevention of numerous cases with low mortality rate then allopathic treatment camphor was used in the epidemics of cholera early 1900 the epidemic of smallpox in which use of variolinum 30 result during 1816 to 1819 and in late 1830s the epidemic typhus in which dr karl successfully treated the severe epidemic of typhus with success rate of 100% in 1932 the epidemic diphtheria which is treated successfully by homeopathic prophylaxis in 1827 the epidemic dysentery in which dr hermann achieved brilliant result with homeopathic treatment In 1950, the epidemic poliomyelitis, which use of genius epidemicus lathyrus sativus in prevention with 100% result. In 1967, the epidemic whooping cough, in which nosodes are used for the treatment. In 1974, the epidemic meningitis meningococcinum 10C was given as prophylactic with effectiveness of 95.7% during 18. 1989 to 1993 the epidemic japanese encephalitis in which use of belladonna 30 single spread up to 80% during 1918 to 1920 the epidemic spanish flu in which the mortality of spanish flu using homeopathic remedy was 0.7% in 2001 the epidemic dengue in which the single dose of eupatorum perfoliatum 30c was given that reduced dengue incidence by 81.5% in 2007 the epidemic dengue in which the use of phosphorus 30 crotalus horridus 30c and eupatorium perfoliatum 30c was given in 2007 the epidemic chikungunya in which homeopathic medicine bryonia 30c was used to prevent the disease in 2011 the epidemic flu in which nosodes or placebo was given for 30 days for preventing flu and acute respiratory syndrome during 2011 to 2013 the app was distributed to the areas prone to the diseases in 2012 the epidemic whooping cough in which homeopathic prophylaxis were less likely to experience severe symptoms as compared to vaccinated comparisons group in 2014 the epidemic dengue in which those patients who taken homeopathic treatment were less prone to have the disease in the year 2017 the epidemic cholera in which the use of mercsol was used by red cross in year 2019 the pandemic corona virus in which use of arsenic alpam 30 bryonia 30 jalsimium for the prevention are used now sanod will further continue the slides now we will discuss about covid-19 pandemic the current novel coronavirus disease covid-19 has rapidly spread over the globe 
and has been declared as pandemic by WHO. Till now, no specific treatment or vaccine has emerged to control this pandemic. However, homeopaths over different part of world have treated a wide range of COVID positive cases with different remedies. This review not only brings forward the success story of homeopathy during past epidemics, but also presents its utility in the current pandemic condition. India में इस pandemic को देखते हुए Ministry of Health ने advisory जारी की थी कि traditional system of medicine भी कोरोना के prevention में उसके management में useful हो सकते हैं. And then homeopathy therefore recommended public notice for genus epidemicus, जो कि कोरोना के case में immunity booster निकल कर आई. और जो कि arsenic album 30 थी. Next, current 2019 novel coronavirus pandemic. Ill ranging from common cold to more severe disease such as MERS coronavirus and SARS coronavirus. The new coronavirus disease COVID-19 was first reported from Wuhan, China on 31st December 2019 and has spread rapidly across 217 countries, infecting 55,56,679 like people and causing death of 3,51,866 like over the globe as on 28 May 2020. India में अगर हम current novel coronavirus के status की बात करें, तो 24 October तक का data है जिसमें 78,482 cases कोरोना की हो चुके हैं, उनमें से 17,992 की death हो चुकी है, and record cases हैं 20,16,046. Common signs of infection include fever, cough, cough may be dry cough, cough Infection after one day of corona infection. Myalgia means muscle pain, fatigue, and breathing difficulties. In more cases, infection can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, or even death. Now talk about pathology. The function of the immune system is critical in the human response to infectious disease. Viral infection induces oxidative stress and causes damage to epithelial cells. Due to damage of these epithelial cells, Corona patient ko breathing difficulty produce hoti hai. A growing body of evidence identifies stress, nutrition and immunity as a cofactor in infectious disease susceptibility and outcomes. The mainstay in management of coronavirus infection has been supportive care, nutrition and preventing further progression. Now talk about prevention. In the absence of a vaccine, social distancing, Forcing hands use one of the key issue for controlling this pandemic is to set up a suitable quarantine period, which is of 14 days, could capture about 95% of the cases developing symptoms so that the practice of isolation will be more if resources. Now, some information. Ministry of IUS, Government of India has also taken steps to undertake research proposals from all stream of IUS to generate scientific evidence on COVID-19. Ministry of Health, Government of India also launched the IU Sanjeevani app and read of IU's active support. Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR, National Institute of Virology at Pune has developed and validated the indigenous IgG enzyme-linked immunosorbent as ELISA test or yeah, COVID coverage ELISA for antibody detection for COVID-19. While the real-time gold standard test is RT-PCR test, robust antibody tests are critical for surveillance to understand the proposal proportion for population exposed to infection. Thank you so much. This is all from my side. Now, Pratik will continue the further slide. Thank you, Pratik. Now, Pratik, please continue. Good morning to one and all present here. My name is Pratik Sharma and in this part of our today's session, we are going to discuss first, what is the relation between homeopathy and 2019 novel coronavirus? Then after that, till date, which had taken place, then what we conclude by attending our today's session and at last, what are the references? So now let's start. Homeopathy in 2019 novel coronavirus. A major treatment by the second largest healthcare fraternity of the world, that is homeopathy. Homeopathic medicine ideally has to do with the cure of disease, the building up of the individual, 
not overlooking the proper hygiene and sanitation but with a deeper view of the needs of the individual himself rather than the needs of the community so homeopathy disease or cure karna hai but apan hygiene or sanitation ko ignore nahi kar sakte now most of the evidences of homeopathic treatment during epidemics happened much before the emergence of the current biomedicine modern epidemiology and contemporary vaccines so since the beginning and origin of homeopathy hamare paas ek vast set of medicines hai jo ki kisi bhi epidemic and pandemic mein jo symptoms produce hote hain hamari medicine mein milte hain but jo dominating medical system hai wo viruses bacteria and external agents ke against vaccine banata hai while individualization is the gold standard it is impractical to use on a wide spread basis during epidemics so pandemic disease mein individualization impractical hai so pandemic mein group of symptoms lete hain jo majority of cases mein dekhne ko milte hain unki totality bana ke jo remedy nikalti hai wo hum prevention ki tarah use karte hain na combination of combination remedies can be effective but must be based on the symptoms of a given epidemic in a specific location so homeopathy mein medicine healthy human beings par uh, proof hoti hai jabki dominating system mein medicine lower animals par proof ki jati hai jisme sirf observative symptoms par dhyan di jata hai jabki hamari homeopathy mein objective plus subjective dono symptoms ko include karke medicine proof ki proof karte hain now the health advice against coronavirus infection included homeopathic medicine arsenic album 30c as a possible preventive which followed the preventive distribution of the homeopathic medicine in various states in india earlier scientific advisory board of ccrh council for research in homeopathy had also considered arsenic album to be advised for prevention of influenza like illness on the basis of evidence from studies arsenic album as one of the constituents in a shown to affect st29 cells and human macrophages also it showed decreased uh, decrease in necrotic factor alpha b hyperactivity reduced expression of neurotransmitter st29 cells and decrease in human necrotic factor alpha release in macrophages now research recently a new coronavirus strain has become a matter of concern for human lives researchers at the wuhan institute of virology called it novel coronavirus 2019 for disease and control prevention refers to it as 2019 novel coronavirus since the beginning of 21st century the current coronavirus outbreak is the third attack previous ones being severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus epidemic in 2003 and middle east respiratory syndrome coronavirus epidemic in 2012 so 2019 coronavirus uh, novel coronavirus third outbreak hai coronavirus ka isse pehle 2003 mein sars covid first outbreak tha and in 2012 में मर्स कोरोना वायरस सेकेंड आउटब्रेक आया था नाउ व्हाट आर द कंक्लूजंस? देयर विल ऑलवेज बी एपिडेमिक्स एंड ह्यूमैनिटी विल ऑलवेज बी ससेक्टेबल टू देम एवरी एपिडेमिक इज यूनिक एंड बिकॉज द टेस्ट ऑफ आर सिस्टम ऑफ मेडिसिन इज नॉट इन व्हाट इट प्रोमिस बट इन व्हाट इट परफॉर्म्स होम्योपैथी इज ऑलवेज रेडी टू फेस सच यूनिकनेस रिगार्डलेस ऑफ इट्स न्यूएस्ट और सीवियरिटी हर एक एपिडेमिक अपने आप में यूनिक है होम्योपैथी हमेशा रेडी रहती है ऐसी यूनिक और सीवियर डिजीज को फेस करने के लिए बिकॉज हम होम्योपैथी में सिम्टम सिमिलैरिटी के बेसिस पर मेडिसिन प्रिस्क्राइब करते हैं हमारे कुछ कोई नेम नहीं है नाउ ऑल फ्लू लाइक इलनेस इलनेसिस कैन इवॉल्व इन निमोनिया विच बिकम्स बाय फार दी मेन कॉज ऑफ मोर्टिलिटी फ्रॉम दिस इलनेसिस as close to 98% of people dying from these flu like illnesses is from pneumonia the current epidemic is also a flu like that severely affects the older and immunocompromised segments of our population 
shows that homeopathy discloses a very consistent and strong prophylactic therapeutic and long term effectiveness while at the same time safe and cost effective and should therefore play a major role in epidemics for prevention as well as cure now prejudice or ignorance are not valid reasons to rule out homeopathy epidemics but rejection implies in dismissing logic evidence and scientificity so homeopathy mein medicines homeopathic prophylaxis ki according rule out karte hain medicine select karte time hame prejudice nahi hona hai symptoms totality ke basis par medicine select karni hai now the way in which the belief of people changes after the presentation of empirical evidence quality of evidence people who did not believe in homeopathy will still not be convinced after reading the evidence presented here people who are equivocal will have a more optimistic view while people who already believed in the efficacy of homeopathy will be almost sure about the risk. much stress needs to be laid upon the generation of the scientific evidence by the clinical trials in such epidemics so aaj tak jitne bhi epidemic and pandemic aaye homeopathy ne hamesha apni prati ko prove kiya hai disease ki the references first the lecture writing of dr samuel henneman second organ of medicine third principles of homeopathy by h r robert fourth centers of disease control and prevention fifth lectures on homeopathic hufland journal seventh minister ayush eighth world health organization who ninth international journal of science and healthcare research so thank you eventually i encapsulate my topic a special thanks to our teachers who gives us this opportunity to share our words and thanks to our mentors dr dinesh boss who guide us very well thank you all for listening us very carefully